So there's a specific way that one has to work with affairs. People can recover from affairs. We have a model for it. It's called attune, atone, well, let's see, atone, attune, attach. We've given talks on it. We're creating a workshop for it to train clinicians how to do it. Very briefly, let me introduce it to you. First, it's important that you read <coughs> Not Just Friends by Shirley Glass. Not Just Friends by Shirley Glass. Glass as in glass, G-L-A-S-S. -S. Mm -hmm. So what she did, she treated only affair couples, and she found that um, first of all, the person who has been betrayed often suffers from PTSD, severe PTSD. They have hypervigilance, they have emotional numbing, alternating with explosions, they have the equivalent of flashbacks, pictures of uh, the partner with the affair person in their mind that intrude into their mind. They have nightmares, sleep disturbances, depression, etc. They <laughs> suffer from PTSD. And of course, hypervigilance. They're constantly looking for signs of the affair continuing mm -hmm. or another one occurring. Okay. So that has to be explained. Then the uh, person who's been betrayed, this is in the atonement phase, needs to be able to express his or her feelings about the affair without using the four horsemen. I feel devastated, I feel destroyed, I feel um, so upset I can barely see straight, I feel furious, I feel terrified, etc. You need to help them speak their feelings and the other person to hear those feelings. In addition, the person who has been betrayed needs to be able to ask questions about the affair to the person who had the affair and have those questions answered absolutely honestly and transparently. It's the only way to build marriage number two, which is what happens. Marriage number one is gone, trust is gone, the entire sound relationship house has been shattered. She's been triggered not only in this with PTSD, but her past with her own family is triggered. So, she gets to ask any question she wants, but caution her to not ask questions specifically about the type of sex they had, because that will give her more images that intrude into her mind. Mm -hmm. But everything else, when did you meet, where, how, etc. Okay, once those questions, and that may take a long time. I had one couple where they spent 10 months on those questions. She came in with notebooks like this. And the betrayer needs to be able to express their remorse, their regret. You do not analyze the marriage yet. You don't analyze it until this stage is finished. Then you can begin, after this is done, after there's been atonement, after atonement, <coughs> after atonement, speaking regret, remorse, etc. Then you begin to work on the marriage and you begin to work on attunement, how to listen to one another. What's gone wrong in the relationship in terms of really empathizing with one another, conflict management, lots of times, couples who have affairs don't do conflict management well. They do it terribly. A lot of times they avoid conflict. They don't talk about conflict at all. And so neither person talks about their own needs and brings up what they need. So you need to help them do that and be able to really attune to the other person's needs and respond to those. And then, and so that may be a long process. And then attachment is the last phase. And in attachment, we're building rituals of connection. Here we may be dealing with sex, finally, sex for them now what kind of sex they may have. And it may be that, you know, maybe the partner won't be ready for it yet. It's usually the last thing that the betrayed person is willing to 
move forward with unless he or she thinks the only way they can hold on to their partner is to be sexual, and then it's, it's false. They're splitting off from themselves. So you don't want that to happen. So attachment also works on, okay, if this happens again, let me tell you, here's what the consequence is going to be. So that has to be spelled out. Did I leave anything out? No, I, I just wanted to add that once you know this is what you have to go through when you have an affair, you're never going to have an affair. <laughs> <laughs> Too much trouble. <laughs>